Welcome to another Good Life program. We're just excited to have Andrew and Philip Cameron with us today. And I said Andrew first because this program's really about Andrew and the things that he's gone through, the things he's seen. Well, it's going to be a great program, and I don't want to give it away. It's called... The, the book is called a B- Our Bummer Lamb. Now, why they call it a bummer, I don't know. But Philip will have an answer. And he's going to start off the program singing, Give Me a Heart for Others. When I think of where he brought me from And where I could have been Crippled, broken, ruined Burdened down with sin I just lift my voice to thank you For all you given me and cry give me a heart Lord to win someone Highway 
and the byways. I'm going to be whatever it is that He wants me to be. I'm willing, Lord, to go with your calendar. A lamb that has been rejected by its mother is called a bummer lamb. Once its mother abandons her lamb, it is forever. The lamb will die broken unless a shepherd rescues it. He takes the lamb into his home, feeds, cares, and redeems the broken animal. When returned to the flock, that bummer lamb never forgets the one who redeemed it. Standing abandoned in a Romanian orphanage, my wife Chrissy and I found a bummer lamb. His name was Andre. This book is the story of how a family made room for a little forsaken bummer lamb. It is the story of us all. We stand redeemed by the care of the Good Shepherd. And here's the book of the Bummer Lamb. And you don't mind being called a Bummer Lamb, do you? No, I mean, when the story is explained, you know, it's, it, it makes sense and it, it brings into reality what this ministry and stuff has done over the years. And so to be called, I've had a lot of people come up to me after services, church services, after this book was released. And they'll just, they won't say my name, they'll say, you're the Bummer Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say, sure, yes. Oh, well, my Lord. proud to be the bummer lamb. Absolutely. What, how I found my bummer lamb was my father. I was in Alabama living in a very easy life. I was on TV, PTL and all these shows here, sang and recorded, written a book on household salvation. And one day my phone rang, and it was my dad from Scotland, and he said that our baby's dying. And I said, what on earth are you talking about, Dad? He says, I'm watching the BBC, the British Broadcasting News, and he says, there are, ba there are babies dying. I says, where? He says, in Romania. I says, oh, that's so sad. I says, why are you telling me this? He says, because I want you to do something about it. Now, it's like me saying to you, I want you to go to the moon. <laughs> I, says, I says, Romania, isn't that where Nadia Komenich comes from, the gymnast? Yeah. He says, yes, he says, and there are babies dying. I says, Dad, I says, I, there's nothing I can do. I says, that's, that's the Red Cross stuff. I, I, I don't know. So he, he was suffering from cancer. Uh, he'd had cancer surgery, and the wound on his back had burst. And he, he had a brace on to, to stop him twisting and torquing and, and, and the, the opening the wound worse. And uh, so I said, look, you're sick. Don't, don't, don't be upset. He's crying. So the next night, the phone rings. It's him, not hello. There are babies dying. Do you know there are babies dying? He's watching eight hours a day of the, the BBC live reports coming from the, the, the cities in, in Romania. I says, Dad, you told me that yesterday. Leave me alone. I says, I'm sick. I says, I'm, I'm, you're sick. I'm busy. Stop this. Enough. I says, I'll send $100 to the Red Cross, and, and, and that's their... Uh, orphans is not my business. And the next day, he called me again. He says, there are babies dying. I says, Dad, you told me that the last two days. And he says, well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I was in church tonight for the first time since surgery. I put some cans of food on the pulpit. And I said, me and Philip are taking this to Romania. He says, if you're not going, I'm going by myself. And if I die on the way, it's your fault. <laughs> he he that, knows how to get. My yeah. Lord, you know Simon Peter Cameron didn't take no for an answer very well. I says, oh, behave yourself. Stop it, man. Okay, fine, fine. So I canceled a couple of weeks of services. 
and flew home, the British press had, had said, cancer-stricken pastor to go to Romania. Well, our town in, in, in the north of Scotland began to give us, I mean, hundreds of tons of clothes. And, and Cross and Blackwells was a big canning factory, gave us five tons of, of tin goods. Um, really? Oh, it was crazy. It was out, so he's telling me every night on the phone before I got there, oh, a lot of, a lot of stuff's coming in. And I'm saying, ah, I, I, that's good, I'm fine, that's good, that's good. Dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the next night, you know, oh, a lot of, a lot of stuff came in today. So when I got to the airport in Aberdeen and they picked me up and took me back to the, to the, the ministry we, we have in Scotland, I came up behind a truck and it said Maitland's Furniture Truck, and, and a furniture store, and I says, what's this truck for? He says, oh, he says, there's not, there's not enough room for me and you in the van. He says, uh, we're gonna, this, this company's allowed us this, this truck. I says, we're taking a truck to Romania. <laughs> he says, aye, he says, there's a lot of stuff. So I, I went up the back and went in to our cafeteria, which is about the size of the studio. And I opened the door, and as eye level, right across, there was bags and bags of black, um, black plastic bags of clothes. And I said, oh, my dear Lord Jesus. I said, when I, when I used to tease my dad, I'd call him Simon, not, not dad. I said, Simon, the truck's too small. He says, do you think so? I said, let me show you. So I took, I said, give me, give me these bags. So he filled this truck until, until the, the wheels were on, the, was on the, the bed of the truck. I said, we haven't even scratched what's in there. He says, well, we're going to have to get a bigger truck. So I went straight from the airport, hadn't slept all night, called um, Hertz, and I says, we're looking for a semi to go to Romania. The guy says, we have them. He says, you're going to have to put 150,000 pounds, that's like $200,000, as a deposit. I says, why? He says, because you're taking this truck into a war zone. I've been down the phone, out over to my father's house. I says, hold on a second. I'm into missions. I says, but I'm not into martyrdom. I says, I'm not going to. I'm not going to he, says, ah. he says, don't be silly, man. You'll be fine. So finally, this, this, this store, this truck, this company um, loaned us like a UPS truck with the truck and the trailer behind it. And we stuffed that truck until the walls were belly, bellowing out. And the, the government had, had um, removed all the tariffs and stuff for over, it was crazy. It was, um, I mean, a real rescue effort. And we went there, and um, for a week I looked for an orphanage. And the pastor that I'd had contact, made contact with, he told me, no, there are no orphans in this country. And when we finally got to find one, after he'd taken all the stuff away from us, he, this church stole all the stuff from the truck. And the day that there was nothing left, he says, I found an orphanage. A thousand yards down the down the road from it, so I walked into this orphanage, and he was standing, up in salon number five, halfway through the back, and I walked up, and as clear as I am talking to you right now, I heard the voice of God say, "This is your son." I had two kids, Phil and Melody. All I want is two kids. I, I preach to all my brothers and sisters. Don't have any more than two kids. You can't educate them. You can't spend time with them. It's not fair for, you know, at all the arguments. And here was this wee, wee waif standing looking at me. And his hair was all matted. And all around his skull, the scalp was raw from, from whatever it was. It was biting and eating him. And he was naked, in his own, standing in his own waist. And I walked over and I picked him up and I said, I don't know who you are. And I don't know how you got here, but I promise you this, I will not stop until I get you. And um, we left, I was back. And he didn't understand oh, not a word. No, 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 he, he'd been standing in that crib. His, his mother had um, abandoned him when he was two weeks old. And he'd spent his whole life in a, a, in a metal prison, literally a metal prison. And he'd never used his hands, so his hands were like flippers. He never, he never played with stuff. So his hands were like this, floppy. And um, he couldn't have climbed up. He couldn't have climbed up three stairs. His legs were so weak, and his, his stomach was distended like you'd see a Somalian or a, a Biafran yeah. child. And um, they, they, I, I picked him up, and, and my sister Wendy had an apple, and I, I held the apple, and he grabbed it out of my hands, and he began to eat. I mean, nonstop. He just ate, the, the, the apple never left his mouth, until it went right down to the core, and it, it fell out of his hands. And he wanted, to, he wanted to jump down and get, get the apple, the, the, what was left, the little core. And um, it, was, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. 
So all that year, I kept going back every six weeks, and I discovered there were no toilets. The, the kids sat on coffee cans. You know the, the big coffee cans, and they'd opened it with the old-fashioned can opener. So they sat them on there for two hours or three hours at a time as a form of, of detention, really, babysitting. And all their bottoms, the, the, rims, the rim of the coffee can had cut into their bottoms. And um, I, I, I can tell you some of the most unbelievable stuff you've ever imagined. We, we, Chris and I, one night, we were bathing all the kids, and we brought new talcum powder and new pajamas for them. And we got a system going, and um, they're all lined on their potties, and I'd pick one up and give it to Mel Chrissy, and she would bathe it, and then someone else would put on powder in the new pajamas, and we had this system going. And um, That's in the orphanage. In the orphanage, yes, yes. So as we're sitting, as they're doing this, I turn around, and this little girl is sitting next to a, a, a potty that had just been... I'd just taken the boy away from that. And she reached over and drank the urine from the potty because they, they didn't give them liquids because they didn't want them to pee in, the, in, the, in their cribs. So this little, and, and, and I said, oh my, no, 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 no. And it was too late because they were so desperate for, for liquid that they, they were, their mouths were continually dry. No one cried in the orphanage because no one cared. And you could cry all you want and no one's going to come and get you. And um, it broke my heart. It absolutely broke my heart. So I kept going back. We put in toilets. I, I got toilets in Scotland and, and pipes in Germany. And I flew some plumbers over. And um, new cribs, all the, the, the crib that you're seeing him in that picture with me, all that, that crib, that's, that's lead paint on that crib. So he teethed on lead paint. They chewed the paint on, off the cribs. And the mattresses, you don't see it in the picture, it's just horsehair mattresses. And um, so in the, in the meantime of waiting to adopt him, I gave them toilets, I fixed the leak in the building, I put new beds, wooden beds in the place, and um, changed the orphanage completely. And finally we went there, and this, this book is the story of how we found a bummer lamb. The bummer lamb is a little a lamb that is born. When I was a boy back in Scotland, my dad was preaching and we had no money. <laughs> And we would go out in the, in the countryside around our, our little fishing town in the northeast of Scotland. And uh, so the, the, the farmers' um, trailers had turnips on them, big turnips, British turn, Scottish turnips are this size. And we would pick up these turnips and we would eat these turnips. But it was at the same time as a lambs being born. And uh, we would sit and watch the lambs being born. And once in a while, a, a mother would reject the lamb. And butt it. If when it came to drink, it would butt, butt the lamb away or kick the lamb away. And if the shepherd didn't get to that lamb, it would, it would die. And the shepherd would take it in and, and feed it. And so we, we, it was a miracle. And this book is the story of how we got our bummer lamb. I called you one night. I was meant to be here on a telethon. I didn't, I forgot about it. I forgot everything when I was there. How many like, years ago was that? 30 years ago. And you hadn't planned to be there. Oh, no, I, I planned for a week, and this was now a, almost a month. And I called, I called, uh, and I, uh, no, in the middle of the night, I was in this house, and the phone rang, and the people that we were with threw the phone into this dark room. Chrissy wouldn't come to bed because there's so much fleas in the bed. And I, 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 so I was lying in the bed with him and, I, and a diaper holding him, and uh, she says, a telephone, America. So I, I'm on the floor feeling for the telephone. And I picked up the, the phone receiver. And I says, hello. And it was, hello, this is Bob DeAndre. You were meant to be here tonight. And I went, oh, my goodness. And you asked me, how are you doing? I says, I'm not doing very well. I, we don't have gas for the car. And um, after a couple of more things, I, I hung up and climbed back into bed with him. And Chrissy was still sitting at the bottom of the bed. And I said, Chrissy, I says, I don't think I'll be back there again. That was terrible because I, no, I had no picture of faith to paint. I was, I was desperate. And what I didn't know was that when Bob put down the phone here, he was live on air. And he turned to you and he said, we're going to help Philip. And you gave, you gave. And the money you gave saved our lives. I, I'd come to the point in a couple of calls I'd made to America, that our ministry, our little ministry, was failing. I said to Chrissy one day, I said, you understand, Chrissy, if we continue with this adoption, we are going to lose our house. 
And she looked at me, Bob, and she says, we have no choice. Mm. A house wasn't so important as this bummer land. And um, the folks gave the money to rescue Andrew and allow us to bring him to America. And the very first place we brought him 30 years ago, about this time, was here. And a wee bummer lamb, we took him to Disney World and blew his mind out the back of his head. I got pictures of him looking like this. You know, last week I'm in an orphanage starving to death, and today I'm looking at the, the Magic Kingdom. And he's walking around with his, they shaved his head because he was going to the next orphanage for lice. And um, we took him here, and I put him into Bob's arms, and I said, you have rescued my son. And that there is my bummer lamb kissing you, and you rescued and redeemed him for me, because I, I didn't have the wherewithal. And everyone watching today, maybe some of you remember. Look how cute. And uh, he, was, he was much cuter than he is now, but never mind. Well, you know, he's gone downhill a lot since that picture. But that's my bummer lamb in your arms 30 years ago. You never know when you sow a seed, Bob, what ends up with that seed. When David killed Goliath, he thought he was fighting a giant. He didn't realize he was, be, he was going to be king. When the widow, when the w woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment, if you read in the next chapter, everywhere he, he went, the sick were brought out and they, so they could touch his hem. She began a brand new way of touching Jesus. And uh, when you gave that night to a broken guy that had no money left and was, was in, at the depth Everybody told me no. The American embassy told me no. I, I stood there with Chrissy, and I said, you know, I, I, I want a visa for, for this child we're adopting. He says, good. He says, where do you live? I says, Alabama. He says, um, let me see your passport. I says, well, I, I'm a green card. I, 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 I'm, not a, I'm not a citizen. He says, well, get out. Get out of this place. Get out. And he threw me out of the American embassy. I went to the British embassy, and I says, I want a visa to take. I thought, I'll take him to Scotland where my, my parents were. And I uh, spoke to Miss Christy Gordon Rowe, who was, the, who was the ambassador there. And she says, we can't help you. Your home study is Alabama. This is for UK. Get out. There's no way. No way. And everywhere I went, everybody told me these three words. There is no way. There is no way. The same three words. And every time they said it, the Holy Ghost began to sing inside me, I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will make a way for me. And that song sang to us all through the impossibilities. And that is how we found our bummer lamb. Oh, what a story. <clears throat> and you were part of it. Well, I was just a wee part. No, no. <laughs> Sitting in that room in Bucharest with no gas, there was no unleaded gasoline in the city. The car was out in a line hundreds of yards long. I'm sitting in a house, and the, the, the woman whose house I was in had misrepresented herself to me and had stolen all the money I had brought with me. I mean, we were, we were stuck in Bucharest with no money to leave. The only money I had was with the guy sitting waiting for the car, hoping to get some unleaded gasoline. And I was stuck. I mean, I was absolutely I had nowhere left. I had gone through every avenue I could think in my mind, and I was stuck. And when that phone was thrown into that darkened room, and I fell out of my bed looking for it on the floor, she just threw the thing in, and the receiver was one place, and the, and the, the actual where the phone sits, the cradle was somewhere else, and I'm in the darkness feeling for it, and I found it, and I r pulled the cable, hello, hello, this is Bob DeAndre. And I realized I'd failed you in not being here. And I hadn't thought about that. And um, if you hadn't been there, and if your heart hadn't been open for God to speak to you, and your heart hadn't been open to give, Andrew William Cameron would not be sitting in this studio today. Well, that's quite a story. It's crazy. And you it's should true. read the rest. You <laughs> should read the rest of it. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just crazy. And there's so many things in this book 
th that you've been through. It was some. It was a. It was a saga. And where Moldova and these places are today, I've been there, and yeah. I know is. I remember going up to an orphanage with you, and you said, well, I just have to stop here for a little while. Yeah. And I thought, this place is nothing. It's out in the wilderness. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, why is he stopping here? And uh, it was just your heart. He, he answered the song you sang. Give me up for others, absolutely. When I, went, when I went there, I mean, I was in America on TV. We'd be on PTL for years singing, Oh, the Holy Ghost will set you for the dancing. We were known in America for praise songs. And then I preached on Household Salvation. One of, one of my books sold 300,000 copies on Household Salvation. I was 37 years of age, and every wish list I'd had leaving Scotland as a young boy, all the, all the stuff I want, my bucket list. Every, sum, every Easter, rather, Chris and I went to Hawaii. For uh, I used my free miles, because I have three million miles in Delta Airlines, traveling all the time, preaching. All the stuff I needed, a nice house in Alabama, a Mercedes-Benz in the drive, going to Hawaii, you know, going to Scotland in the summertime. And, um, but I was, I was lost. I had no purpose. The thing that scares me most, for me and for you, and for all of us, is that we lose the purpose of our life. Yes. Where there is no vision, people perish. And I look at America right now in the state we are in. We are the greatest country that the sun has ever kissed the earth with. There's never been a country like America. No country. Not, not Rome in its greatest days, Britain in its greatest days. Name the countries of the earth, and they are all infants compared to the wealth and the power and the blessing that America has. And I'm watching the greatest country in the world fall over itself, tripping up, fighting amongst ourselves. Lincoln said, America will, no foreign foe will ever drink from the Ohio River. If America is to fall, it will fall from within. And the, the, the most dire thing that we face, the church, the nation, me, is having no vision. And when my father forced me to go to Romania that day, I had no idea. When I picked this wee waif up out of a crib and promised I'd come back for him, I had no idea that I was setting myself up on the, the, the story of my life and the, the saga of, and the adventure of my life. And since those days, I've been there 200 times built a bunch of homes for kids in Moldova when I, we, we, my father called, the phone rang. My father called me, don't stay in Romania, go to Moldova. I says, where in the name of heavens is Moldova, Simon Cameron? He says, it's not far away, it's just one more country over. The Carpathia, you've been there, haven't you, Bob? Yes. Were, were those mountains real, Bob, that I drove you across? They were real. Were your prayers scary. real? <laughs> <laughs> scary, scary. It is terrible. And I, I found in a, in a village called Hinchest 200 handicapped girls. 11th of December, I walked in, and I says, you know, the, the first thing the director said, have you ever seen a baby freeze to death? You've been in that orphanage? And I says, no, sir, I have never seen a baby freeze to death. He says, 16 of our babies, our, ki our children have frozen so far this year. And um, all sense, all sense of wanting to be successful in America, all sense of wanting to have a ministry, a big ministry, went straight out the window. It has never come back the window. All I want is to spend my life touching and reaching and caring for broken lives. And um, in Moldova, when a girl turns 16 and a boy, they're, they're sent away and traffickers offer them fake jobs. And they use the girls 30 to 50 times a day until they kill them. A trafficked girl can make $300,000 a year, a year for a trafficker. The boys are sent away to construction sites, and they, they're given no money, and they li live amongst the boulders and the, the cement that they're building. And they, they, they live on starvation food. And th then after a year, they're given no money. 
and they find their way back to us, broken and frail, and we tell them, God loves you. He's not done. This is just the beginning. And that's the miracle of up to date what we're doing in Vatra Village, which is just miraculous. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing seems like a vision that I had or something. I, it's crazy. Because I've lived with you and every step of the way. Yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. And we're and, and right now Vatra Village, CTN sponsored one of the homes at Vatra Village. And um, it's just amazing to see. Can we show that video? Is that possible to do that? Yeah. We have that video. Do we have that video? Watch this video. CTN update. The CTN up this is this is from we have a, a village of six houses in Vatra. I, 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 we call it Vatra Village. And CTN support and, and sponsored one of these homes. These and aren't just homes. You're about to see how beautiful these are. My, my wife Chrissy and my daughter Melody is there right now unloading a container into these homes to furnish them better and equip. We, we just opened another home. So watch this video. I think you'll be blessed by it. Watch this. CTN, we are so happy to tell you that so much has happened in Vatra village since our last update to you. We finished furnishing the house just in time before school started and the boys have finally moved into this beautiful house that you have helped provide for them. Unwanted by society boys, here are being called sons and their dreams and hopes are today a reality because you cared. What they longed for most, they have found in this home, a family. Where things like cooking, brushing their teeth, doing their homework and going to sleep in their own bed every night is a miracle for them. And what's even more amazing is that one of our boys, uh, Victor, you can come here and say hello. Hello. Last week, he received God in his heart, and more than this, he got baptized. And I am so blessed to say thank you for what you've done. Because of people like you, Victor got a chance to know what does the true love mean, which is God. So thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> and that's our boy's home. So we, there are six houses all together. One is a boy's home. The, the house parent of that home has been here. His name is Andre. And he married the girl that spoke Ulizana's sister. And they've had a beautiful little baby. And they're now house parents. So kids that we rescued as orphans are now adult and married and moms and dads. And they are now house parents in the house that CTN sponsored. A miracle. It's a miracle. Of a miracle. Really a is. miracle. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I want to talk to the bummer lamb. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're going to sing for us. I am. Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today.
when I fall His ear hears me when I call What a wonderful man I'll never forget the day When I heard my Savior say I'll walk with you all the way. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful name. Today, he's my help. Tomorrow, he'll be the same. When dark shadows fall, I can feel him so near. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful name. What a name, the name of Jesus. Today he's my hell. Tomorrow the same. When dark shadows fall. I can feel him so near. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful name. Thank you. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful man. Today, he's going to be your help. And that's a promise straight from his heart. And tomorrow, he's going to be exactly the same. He never changes. He's always there. And when dark shadows fall, I can feel him so near. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful man. Come on, sing it with me. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful name. What a wonderful name. Today, he's going to be my help. Thank God. Tomorrow, the same. When dark shadows fall, I can feel him so near. What a wonderful man. What a wonderful man. His name is Jesus. The name of all, above all names. The man of sorrow who loves you and will never let you We've been talking with Philip, and we've kind of left the bummer lamb out. But I want, in this segment, to talk to Andrew. 
And I want to know, do you remember any of that? You remember being in that crib? I, I don't actually remember being in that crib. When I first came over, um, Dad would pray for me, and he would lay his hands on my head and plead the blood of Jesus over my memory and, and what I'd gone through, uh, you know, for those four years of my life. And so I, I, didn't, I, I don't remember anything. And when I was 15, uh, Dad took me back to the orphanage, the same orphanage. Not to put me back, just, no. to, <laughs> just to visit. Yeah, I changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so some of the ladies that actually worked at the orphanage uh, remembered me and uh, remember my name and tried to speak to me in Romanian. And I don't, I don't know Romanian. I don't remember Romanian. I only knew a few words when I was little. And, um, and they tried to speak to me, and I said, I'm sorry, I, I, I only speak English now. And um, so that was an experience, you know, the fact that I could go back and visit that orphanage where I, you know, I spent my first four years of my life uh, there. Yeah. And um, what, I was actually praying about, like, being here today and, and what to say, and, and uh, it moves me to, to know that people gave 30 years ago to make an impact for my life. Um, so a lot of times you'll give to ministries and, and, and those partners that give to CTN and sometimes you don't see the full impact that you make on someone's life and they made an impact on my life. I wouldn't be sitting here today if it weren't for generous partners and, and believers and prayer warriors that, that believed in, in dad and believed in this station and this network. Um, I wouldn't be here today. And it's, as dad mentioned, the woman with the issue of blood and touching the garment that wasn't just for her. That miracle wasn't just for her. That was for people, you know, f for years and decades and centuries to come, um, you know, that would hear of the, the powerful, you know, um, just the healing the of, and virtue uh, of Jesus. And, and that's what's happened with this ministry. It's not just me. I was the start of it, but it's all the kids after that that have come and have been rescued and have been saved and impacted and come to know Christ through my story as well. So I'm just, I'm just thrilled to be here and be able to be with you. And uh, to see those pictures, I found those pictures last year, but I, I wanted to keep a hold of them because I knew at one point, uh, you know, we'd, we'd want to show those. And um, I just want to thank you for, for being a part of my story. Uh, well, I want to thank you for being the story. <laughs> I'm just wondering... <clears throat> You, you know how they have these pictures, you they take reduce. one photograph and then they a redo 30 years later? So after the program, if we can, if you climb up in his arms and kiss him on the cheek, yeah. we'll take another picture. <laughs> It'll be 30 years later. But what Andrew's saying is true. I, I, I can't state this categorically enough that if, I hadn't if, if you hadn't called me that night, I didn't know how to get a hold of you. I didn't even know I was meant to be here, to be quite honest with you. I, I was so fried with what I was experiencing. If I don't even know, if you know how you got a hold of me that night. I, I don't. I have no idea. And the phone rang, and it's thrown into my room. And if you hadn't reached me at that moment, I was only in that house for one night. The next day, we had to go on to the next, trying to chase permission to adopt him. And if, if I hadn't been in that house and you hadn't called me at that moment, and if the Holy Ghost hadn't spoken to you that night and they hadn't, you hadn't given that moment, I, I said to Chrissy, I mean, I said to Chrissy, I said, that, that night she wouldn't come to bed and the fleas, they're, they're, they're biting me. But I knew he needed comfort, so I took my arms. And, and in those days, because he, he'd, never, he'd never had to, to, he was never taught how to be, body trained and stuff. And um, it, it, when I cuddled them at night, I knew I was going to be wet in the morning, soaked, because they never had any stuff like that in the orphanage. And um, I'd committed myself to that, that bed that night with the fleas. And I said to Chrissy, I says, I don't think this is going to work. We can't, this is too big for us. We didn't have the money. And um, I, was, I was literally in Bucharest and had to get back to, to all the way back to Belgium, what I'd flown into. And I didn't know, I didn't have the money to get from Bucharest back to Belgium, never mind anything else. And I sat in utter and complete loss that night when that phone hit the floor. I don't even know how we got the money to you. <laughs> I, I, what, happened, what happened was, I would, in, in those days, there's no phones. 
if you went to the post office, you'd book a phone call to America. And you'd sit in this room, and there'd be a row of telephones in these little booths. And through this tannoy, you'd hear, Cabina doi, Cabina doi, um, cabin two, Cabina doi, or patro. And you'd go to the number, and you'd go inside, and, and you'd pick up the phone, and you'd contact. But I could only afford like two minutes a phone call a day, and I'd call the office, and I'd say, is there any money? Please, is there any money? And Lisa would say to me, well, there's, you, you can use 200, I'll put $200 on the credit card or $100 on the credit card or $50 on the credit card. And that's how we survived every day. I mean, we were literally down to that point. And um, we were at, at, at breaking point. And when you, when you responded to us and sent the check up to Montgomery, I, I didn't even know it. I had no idea this had happened when I <laughs> called. And they said, you will not believe what we have just received from CTN. I says, what? She says, a $20,000 check. That was like, that was like the, oh, God. I, I, I put the phone down, I went outside the cabina, and Chrissy was sitting. I says, Chrissy, you are not gonna believe what's happened. She says, what's wrong? I says, no, 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 no. She says, I says, Bob, they've sent us $20,000. And um, it got much easier after that. <laughs> at, least, at least we could eat. And um, it, was, it was amazing. And all those years ago, Mike Murdoch says a saying, whatever seed you plant in the ground never leaves your life. It always goes forward in your future. Mm. And here we are 30 years later. When you were kissing that wee boy 30 years ago, you had no idea that he'd be sitting here thanking you for his life. And let me tell you, he's had a wonderful life, an amazing life, part of my he, he was in school to go to, he's in university to become a lawyer. I was driving down the road one day with him, and he's quiet. And I says, I, I, I'm thinking, what's wrong? Because you never know, you know, what his heart's thinking. And he says, Dad, I was, I've been thinking and praying. I says, oh. He says, look, I don't think God would have me adopted by you. Just to be a lawyer. He says, I want to spend my life helping kids like me. Mm. And um, he, is, he is my right-hand man. We travel all over the place. If you're on our Facebook page, you see that we fight with each other all the time on Facebook. It's a public war that we have. And um, when, when, my, when my arms get tired, and when you've been doing this for as long as I have, you, your, your arms get tired, he's there to say, come on, we can make this. Come on, let's keep going, Dad, keep going. And... Um, you know, I've never told, I never said it publicly, how much we gave for the building and... For the... In that, in that early, yes. Well, can I or... May yeah. I? You guys helped us sponsor one of the homes in Vatra Village with a check for $100,000. And in, if you come to Vatra Village, there's a sign on the door. This house is sponsored by CTN, Bob, and Jane DeAndre. And it's, I mean, our kids live in that house every day and pray for this ministry and what you've made possible. And let me show, if I can, let me set this video up. Our kids are orphans when they come to us, but they, they, they turn into missionaries. It's amazing. They become sons and daughters, and then they start ministering. And um, all through this pandemic that we've been having is worse in Moldova than it is in America. You imagine this with no, medic with no medication, with no help, no ambulances or a few ambulances. And so our, our kids go out. We've been given permission by the government to go out, communist country, and they feed people. And one of the ladies we just recently met is a woman we've known for a long time called Valentina. She had a stroke and she can't speak and she can't walk. And when she got sick, her son abandoned her, the only child she had. And our kids have brought her food for, for years. And um, they went and she's in really bad condition. She hasn't had a shower, we didn't know this. I hasn't had a bath for three years. And this is what you are doing by supporting Vatra Village and building, uh, buying that house and allowing these kids to be God's hand extended. And um, this is Valentina's story, watch this.
That makes me cry. Well, Va Valentina, um, if you saw the, her bed, it, it's, it's eaten away with her, with her waist. And um, the, the kids call me and says, Dad, this, this woman really needs help from us. And I says, well, what can we do? And they says, well, can we offer her an, to go into a care home, which is still horrible compared to America, but it's better than where she's been living. So they went and says, Valentina, we'll, we'll pay for you to go to a, a, an elderly care center. And uh, she says, no, my son might come back. Mm. And she's sitting in this hovel and the only food she gets is from orphans. The orphans' hands bring her food. And many and, others. And, and many others, multiple other places. And the crazy thing, the way we found to break the orphan spirit of poverty in an orphan child is to give them something and say, give it away. And as they give and as they go and they paint people's houses, we do this all the time. This is not... This is just one video. We do this all the time, every day. We're, we're fixing homes, putting in windows, redoing floors, pouring concrete because of just feeding, mud. Feeding poor families. Feeding and poor families. And um, so you're not just, when you support the orphan's hands, you're not just, you know, building a house and, and providing a hotel for kids to stay in. These kids are turning into rabid Holy Ghost missionaries. And talking of the Holy Ghost, I've got one short, if you let me tell you one more yeah. story. You saw the girl praying at the end of that video. Her name is yeah. Catalina. She called me about a month, two months ago. She says, Dad, the Lord has told, Jesus has told me to have a camp, a youth camp. I said, you can't have a youth camp. COVID has stopped all youth camps in Moldova. She says, well, Jesus has told me. What do you, what do you tell a, a girl that when Jesus, there's no argument? I said, okay. So she went, now listen, in a communist country, in a communist city with communist cops, this girl at 21 went to the communist cops and said, Jesus has told me to have a youth camp. And the cops said, okay. Only camp we know of in Moldova. She, she, began to, I, she called me back. She says, the police have said yes. I says, I'll, I'll send the money. How much will it cost? She says, no, no, no. If Jesus told me, he's going to pay it. What kind of faith is this? So she invited some of her friends. Some had moved to Europe, Italy and Germany and stuff for jobs. And one young, young man sent her 500 euros. Someone else sent her 100 euros. And by the time they'd all sent the money in, she'd paid for the camp without getting a penny from me. And that's a miracle all by itself. She had 60 young folk come. 30 were born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Mm. And we have a 12-second clip they had prayer meetings every night for the, Holy, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to listen to this clip to tell me if you hear the sound of revival in a communist country, a bunch of orphans praying for other kids that aren't orphans to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. Amazing. Amazing. So cool. Why don't you lead us in prayer? Sure. Could yeah. you do that? Yeah. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for all the lives that have been changed and reached through this ministry, through this network, Lord. We just thank you for what you've done in all the lives, including my life. Um, we just thank you for, you know, just the impact that, uh, you know, Jesus has had all over the world. And, and we pray that we have the ability to reach more you know, and change more lives as we go on for years to come through the work of the Orphan's Hands, through Vatra Village, um, and just other projects that we are a part of uh, in outreach and reaching people for Jesus. And we just thank you for who you are, for what you've done in our lives, and we honor you for it. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Uh, thank you, Bummer Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> a new name. A new name. Well, Wonderful. we thank you, Andrew especially for giving up your vocation to do the greatest thing you could possibly do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I love what I do, and it, 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 I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> we travel all over the world, the two of us, and this is the truth. 
the days we sit. Yesterday, we were sitting in the car saying, we are the most blessed people in the world, getting to do what we do for the kingdom of God. Find something that makes your heart burn, because when you have a vision, you will flourish. When you have no vision, you will perish. Amen. And I just want, I want you to know, because we don't tell us a lot. That's why I wanted you to know about Batra Village, <clears throat> what you've done. And we're open for you always to give as God blesses you and as God speaks to you. Give, give. People give cars, they give all types of things so that we can help others. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank Andrew you and Simon, a little, little Simon. Simon Jr. <laughs>